Let's welcome Shimon Lichtenstein, who joins us today to discuss the Shidduch crisis, the age gap, the Nussi organization. Last week, Rav Slomowitz's yeshiva in Lakewood made a huge announcement abolishing its fourth-year-based medrash, and it did so in order to help tackle the Shidduch crisis. Now, for the past 12 years, Rav Shimon Lichtenstein has been a Nussi volunteer who has researched the age gap extensively and its impact on Shidduchim. He also has a great deal of experience in programming and in data analysis. So, Rav Shimon, thank you so much. It's a privilege to welcome you. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Uh, this announcement by Rav Slamowitz's yeshiva, before we get to the numbers and the data, I want to start there because this is something along the lines of what Nussi has been pushing for a very long time. Is that correct? That's correct. The idea is to bring the Rebbechim to start younger because they, they start four years after the Rebbechim start. There's this problem that's just not enough boys to go around. And, uh, so yes, uh, uh, limiting to how many years they stay here in America before they go to Israel is definitely a help. Okay, and I think that I want to I want people to understand that because I think there is a lot of confusion surrounding what you just said. So number one, um, if you could describe what, what you just described is that there are simply not enough, at least according to the numbers. Uh, it, it, you, whatever theories somebody comes up with, whatever approaches we do, more shatchanim or pickiness, uh, you know, your research has shown that it's a numbers game and there simply is not enough uh, boys in the dating pool to match every single girl. So could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I, I think the best analogy would be, I mean, everyone would realize that there are many more children in first grade than there are in 12th grade. Nobody would argue with that. I mean, our population is growing. It's not just, uh, I mean, there's, there's more born every year than the previous year. So uh, uh, it's the numbers are they actually we you know what the numbers are. It's about six percent more boys born every year, and there are, we shall get to it later, which could just confuses things. If there's more boys, why is there a problem? But yeah. but we're increasing every year by about four and a half percent. So just around numbers, let's say five percent more. So let's say you're looking at uh, a school that has a hundred fifth graders you'll find there'll be 105 fourth graders, 110 third graders, 115 second graders, and 120 first graders. I didn't say anything new, which is basically, it's, it's, it increases every year. Now, if you were a principal and you're trying to send out, let's say, all your first graders to a park, but you want them to have somebody older to hold their hand to watch them. And so it's okay, we'll take the, the fifth graders and uh, they'll be the ones there, the older ones. And you find that no matter what you do, you have 120 uh, first graders and only 100 fifth graders. And no matter what you do, it's how to pair them up. 20 just don't have who to pair up with. There's just nothing you can do about it. And uh, so that's this, the simple problem when you see from fifth grade to first grade. Now move the clock forward, let's say 13 years. Now, these fifth graders are now 23 years old. The first graders are 19 years old. And here you go, trying to make a shivach. Of course, I flipped it here. I, I said it's the, 20, the, 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 the fifth graders are now the boys, and the first graders are the girls. So you basically start a shivach for this particular school or this particular community, where you have 120 girls starting shivach, and you have 100 boys starting shivach. No matter what you do, having more shatchanim or any other criteria put in, you have a problem. So you say, well, not everybody has to get married the very first year. Well, how about next year? Well, next year you have the same thing. You have 125 boys and you have a, a 100, 105, sorry, 105 boys, but you have 125 girls. No matter what you do, as you keep going on, you're constantly having more and more girls. And this is what's been showing up. As the problem is the girls get older and uh, there's just not enough to go around. And it's, it's in the thousands now. I don't have an accurate number. I don't have any number, but I do know from some of the schools that they're saying that there's that many girls are still single. So the, the idea from to explain it, that uh, if you start out with a mathematical problem where you're trying to match up an impossibility, you're going to have a problem. It's just not going to be enough to go around. Right, that's, that's sort of simple. I don't know how simple it is to others to understand, but I understand this very well. 
Yeah, no, you know, you clear, you actually made it very, very clear. And, uh, you know, even to those of us who are not immersed in it the way you are and you have been for many years. So, no, I appreciate that. And then something like this policy, and there's, uh, you know, famously there was a meeting of uh, Rosh Yeshiva with Rosh Hillel Hirsch. Uh, I, you know, there are a lot of details that have not been publicized, but, you know, there are rumors that other yeshivas are going to follow suit with Rosh But the way this would solve the problem, the way you're describing it, is that it, it would just encourage boys to basically start dating younger. So the idea is that the bigger the gap, you're saying, let's say, for argument's sake, for every 100 boys that are 23-year-old right now, maybe there's, uh, let's just throw out a number, 110, 115 girls who are 20 years old or 19 years old. So the closer we get them together in terms of age that they start dating, that's supposed to be the solution to the problem. Now, I, I, n number one, the way you describe the problem, we know the factors here. We know that there's population growth every year. That's indisputable. So even if there are a few more boys, well, we'll get to that, you know, how that, how that affects things. But we know there's population growth, and we know that there's an age gap. We know that boys, anecdotally, but it's very clear, they start dating most of the time, not before age 22. We know many girls start dating at age 19, maybe 20 in the Litvisha world. So I almost don't know. You know, there are people out there who, and we'll get to your data shortly because you have perhaps more knowledge about this from a data standpoint than anyone on the planet. But there are people who like throw out theories. They say the the the, the girls are too picky, or they say you know that uh, you know other theories they're not enough chatchanim to go around, and they encourage speed dating. There's, there's all sorts of approaches. And by the way, they may be very very valid and legitimate and, and useful approaches. So I'm not knocking the approaches. But your response to that is always going to be the same thing. You know, how do you dispute the fact that in a in a, in the same dating pool, a hundred girls, hundred and ten or fifteen, a hundred boys, I should say, hundred ten or fifteen girls. So at the end of the day, whatever approach you solve, it, it, it doesn't get to the core problem. I, I, it, it, it's true because people say more shatchanim are needed. More shatchanim would only speed up the, re, the the results. It would stay the same, no matter what you do. You cannot match up a hundred with hundred and fifteen, like you said. It just doesn't work. The ones maybe that are have the most money or they're more they're most charismatic or yiches or whatever else have, maybe they'll float to the top. But when you, you're finished, those 15 don't have whom to marry. It's it's very simple. So you always say, well, these 15, maybe they'll marry somebody from next year's. But next year, the same thing is happening. You're constantly pushing with a point where there's like 15% more. It's not really quite 15, but uh, just using your example. And, and, and it's, so now we're not dealing with 100 students. We're dealing with about 2,500 of graduates every year in the U.S. and Canada. So you're dealing, if you're talking about a 10% problem, you're talking about 250 girls graduating each year or this year that will not find the shidduch, which is just incredible. We started talking about this 10 years ago. We said it's 2,000 girls that are well, approximately. And we figured, you know, over the next 10 years, the, the, from those 2,000, 200 each year, you will, we will accumulate another 2,000 that are staying single. And the problem just goes on and on. And uh, I don't know how to, uh, to, to, to to address it. Like people say, they're being too picky. What does picky have to do with it? Go back to the school here, for fifth grade and first grade. Yacht pick, nish pick. What's supposed to happen to those 15 extra boys in first grade that have nobody to pair up with? Right. So let me uh, nail that down a little bit. Let's dive into that, because uh, exactly as you're saying, uh, you know, if, if it's a numbers game, it's a numbers game. There are p and 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 you've you've seen more data. Like I said, I want I want to get into your data in a moment. But um, there are skeptics out there. From an anecdotal standpoint, I think we all would look around, whether it's the Lakewood community, the Muncie community, Brooklyn, others. You know, we all look around, and it, it certainly feels like there's a, a lot more girls a, a, age. 28, 30, 35, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a very difficult struggle. And I don't want to minimize it in any way. I want to be very compassionate about it because it's, it's, it's pequak nefesh. But um, anecdotally, people look and most of us feel that there are just more girls out there than boys. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yet there are skeptics out there. And, and you just described a number in the hundreds, which, so, you know, sounds accurate, you know, from everything that I've seen. And I think most of us have seen. So there are skeptics out there. There are people who say, well, but... Without data, we're talking about making dramatic changes. They're talking about uh, sending kids to Yisrael a year earlier, two years earlier, possibly dating a year too earlier. Boys maybe are not going to be ready. It's going to take time to adjust to the mindset. So tell us about you know the data, how you could be so certain about what you're describing. 
Well, which part do, you, the, the, uh, do we have to answer? And I, you know, did he agree that each year there are more children born than the year before? I mean, if you don't believe that, I, I, I do have them for, uh, data on that also. But that's the basics behind it. That cannot be the, the yeah. There is no disputing that. There's no disputing. I think I, I, yeah. And and I don't like I said. I, I really believe in your position. So it's hard for me to like argue the other side. But uh, except there's an actuarial theory that I'll get to a little bit later without getting into too many weeds. But but um, yeah yeah. Everyone knows that there's population growth. Everybody knows that uh, next year's first grade and first grade five years from now is going to have a lot more kids than this year's first grade. It's not just because people are shuffling around neighborhoods. It's because you know Baruch Hashem, a couple which is a, a husband and a wife. On average, you'll have three, four, or five children, you know, in, in, in most situations. There's, there's a booming population growth. Uh, I guess pe some people feel like, well, yeah, maybe the age gap is not as big as everybody assumes. But, uh, you know, I think there are just skeptics out there who say, listen, at the end of the day, there are enough boys for girls. In other words, you, your, your point is that if you take these two factors, that uh, the, the, there, are, there, there are more kids in the next year than there are in the previous year, uh, and the fact is that older boys are dating younger girls, it's pretty much, it's a given. Yeah, it's obvious if the girls would start later or if the boys would start younger or a combination of the two, it would work fine. The real issue is, everyone says, you know, what do you want from the boys? They're doing just fine. Let the girls start later. The problem with that is that the ones that start later are almost guaranteeing themselves that they will be the problem because it, it, you can't put in a band at least I can't imagine it saying like, you're not allowed to get married before age 21 if you're a girl. If you could pull off something like that, then there would be no changes needed because it'd be right. just fine if the boy started at age 23 because it would be like a two-year gap, which is really ideal. The problem is when it's a four-year gap, we're seeing the problem that we're seeing. Now, not everybody marries somebody that's four years younger. We're talking about on average. And uh, and even there, though they start four years apart, we've taken a survey on that also informal, and we found that the average was more like three years apart. So that helps. If it really was four years apart, it would be even a worse problem than what we're seeing. Not that it's good at all. It's a terrible situation, like you said, to Kiev Nefesh. And uh, it needs addressing. And uh, I'm glad that, you know, at least the, the, the Sushi Shiva came out. I didn't mention the name in, in the article, so I won't mention it either, although I know who it is. Is it still a secret? I mean, let me ask. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, there are some articles. Some articles did not quote it. Other articles did. I, I mentioned the name earlier, but uh, so it's not such a big secret. Not a big secret. So that, that helps. But the truth is, I mean, I'll, I'll be uh, uh, honest. The, the problem is... Uh, how do we get to age 23 versus age 19? Well, the girls go to, I don't, let's, let me back off. The, you go to high school, you finish an average at age 18. So the girls go to seminary for one year on average, no more than that. Then they start, they come back and they start dating at age 19. But the boys, they usually go to a, a, a yeshiva over here for three years, and then they go for another two years to Etsisro. So no, no matter how you twist it, once you're 18 and you add, three, you're 21, you had another two, you're 23. There's just no uh, way around it. You can't say, I want to go for three years. I want to go there actually still for two years. And I want to start Shaduchim at age 21. It's ridiculous. You, 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 it's an impossibility. You're forcing yourself to start at 23. And by the way, we have information from BMG from, from the over the last 14 years, like, like, uh, maybe 13 years, they have uh, 14,000 Bukharim that have come into BMG. They come in an average age of 23. Now, we get this information from them, no names, we just want to know big numbers. And 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 they actually supply us, they say, and they supply the, 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 the birth date of the boy, what year? What is the month he came into BMG? When he got in? When he got married? And if he left single? So we went through all that data, and uh, we see that basically that the, the boys get married very quickly, and uh, the girls just seem to just uh, uh, you know back off. So the point is, starting at age twenty three is already the problem, and. Uh, what Rabbi Slamovitz is doing is to make sure they don't start at 24. 
because if they stay instead of three years in America, so that being age 21 when they go to Israel, they're actually age 22 they go to Israel. Then they had two years, they're starting at age 24, which only makes this, the problem much, much worse. Thankfully, not too many have been doing it, but at least to put a stop to how, however many were doing it. The real uh, solution is to start even younger. Now, I've come up with my own idea, which I think would be very, very helpful if first yeshivas would at least encourage or allow during third year after Pesach's mom, when they're about to go to Yisrael, mostly, to allow that the, the, the Bochum should be involved with Yisrael. Unfortunately, some of them actually, as soon as if you become engaged, they tell you to leave the yeshiva immediately. And you, uh, but that, that sends a very negative uh, uh, signal saying, don't do it. Don't get engaged before uh, you go to Yisrael. And really, the biggest help would be, even if you don't encourage it, at least don't punish the boys that actually do start. And that could have a significant difference because at least if some of them start at age 21, others may follow as well. Now, if you didn't get engaged, you can still go to age zero. Nobody's forcing anything here. But at least, Aman Hashem, at least allow it and, and not stand in the way by punishing the, the Bukharim for having uh, started earlier. That okay. I think would be okay. the biggest, biggest help by far. Now, Rebellion uh, Bear does this. He actually encourages boys to start, and it is working in his yeshiva. Not too many others have followed the uh, suit, and if that could be followed, I think from what, that would be a huge, huge help. Again, this doesn't force anyone to do anything, but at least allows it, and then you can uh, hope that you know help is on the way in a real significant way. Rebelli Bear has third year Bakram dating in his yeshiva? Yes. Wow. He encourages them and they actually do. And uh, I have a grandson, actually, he's Hasidish that came out of there, but he was telling me that this was, he got married a year and a half ago and uh, got engaged a year and a half ago, something like that. And uh, he was saying that about half the, the, the boys that got engaged were actually Litvish because he has a mixture of Litvish and Hasidish boys in his yeshiva in South Wolfsburg. So he does allow it, and how many makes a go of it? I even asked him, I said, how did they handle it? Because I've gotten some feedback that they say it would be a, a, a rifia and it would be like a weakening. The boys come in, they're engaged in the big parties, and everybody's coming and going. He said, no, he said, you come in there that afternoon after you're engaged, everybody makes a chayim, and that's it, no more. So he's able to handle it. It's possible to do it. And uh, if other yeshivas would follow it, I think would be the biggest yeshiva by far. Interesting. And I, I want to point out, I, I wouldn't, I, I know this from my experience in yeshivas, it's not just the engagement, the l'chaim, the vart, it's also the actual dating that itself, you know, it's a distraction. So boys come in, they talk about it. I, I'm not saying it cannot be handled, but I imagine that's part of the uh, hesitation of other yeshivas. Uh, although, like I said, you know, that, that doesn't mean that in this situation, you know, it's such an extreme situation, it might be could die. I'm just pointing out the other side. Um what would you uh, what would you say is the uh, approximate number of girls, let's say in a given year? You made a, a, a you, you mentioned a number earlier, but I don't know if you were just giving an example. But uh, how many possible girls there are this year, just to give us some sort of idea, who maybe don't have a match? It's probably in, in like you know, see twenty five hundred girls have graduated approximately. I don't have exact numbers for now. Um, yeah, just in a ballpark. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's 23 or if it's 26, it really doesn't matter, but we just to get an idea. So at the beginning, it does it looks pretty good. You know, you, you go out there and at the same time, you'll have maybe 2,100 boys or starting at the same time. And as you're moving along each year, you figure, okay, I'll also get engaged. But as you move out the clock, you'll find out eventually 10 years later, 250 of those graduated this year did not have whom to marry. It's just a numbers wow. game. There just wow. isn't, and and we're adding this to this thing every single year. Yeah, it's more every year. Now uh, uh, there are those who say, as far as let's say this policy and your policy idea is very interesting, and you're saying Revelli Bear really implemented already. It's interesting. I, I wasn't even aware. It's not so public, maybe, but um, this policy of uh, of of abolishing fourth year based marriage, sending boys to Eretz Yisrael. There are those who think that, and you even alluded to this, that you know many many Bukharim, after 30 base medish are already going to Eretz Yisrael. I don't know the percentages, but um, there are those who think that boys are already going to Eretz Yisrael. And, and number two, just because they go a year earlier doesn't mean that they're going to start dating a year earlier. Some of them might just end up staying in Eretz Yisrael a little bit longer. 
So I guess, do you feel that that's going, let's say that yeshiva, were, that, that policy were implemented throughout all the, um, but, but the Midrashim, you know, talk about Passaic and Patterson, all the different yeshivas, Philly, let's say, uh, would that make a big enough dent? Would that be a real possible solution? You're asking if they all implemented the fourth year, or if you're asking that they didn't, that they, they, they allowed to do third year. Stop fourth year based if, if all the yeshivas would stop fourth year based matters, but but keep third year intact, like Rasulam Woods is doing, how much of a difference would that make? I don't know because I think it's a relatively small amount that stayed for fourth year. I don't have any numbers on it, so I, I'm just going to guess. I'm not even from a litvish background, so it's, it's hard for me to. Uh, I, I work with numbers as a programmer, and I got involved with this as a volunteer, but I wouldn't know uh, at, at all how many are stay, stay for fourth year. Right. No, I wonder the same thing. I, I, I don't know. Anecdotally, I think it depends on the yeshiva, but uh, I do suspect a lot of Bakram are already leaving after third year. But there I, are... think it, I think it helps to the point because there are much yeshivas who are not aware of the problem or not sure why, how, how to tackle it. Or, or not, I don't really not understand. They, they should know, because, but for whatever reason, uh, I don't think anything has come out from the from the from the boys' side as to what they should do as a, for a change. Everyone suggests the girls should do something else, be less picky, or we should find Shakunin, but it was never. But here, at least, when Rabbi Islam always said, "I'm not going to have a fourth year." It's not like saying he's against learning. You have to get out of yeshiva and do something else. I just don't want you to learn. He's saying we have a problem here with the girls. So maybe it'll help for other is to take a similar approach because once it becomes the topic of conversation, right? It's hope. Hopefully, there's something that's going to happen down the line. Yeah, and that's what why we're having you here. Yes, understood. And now I want to ask you: uh, there was an article in Ami Magazine, probably six or eight months ago. An, an actuary went and did a study. Uh, you know, and now again we can question a lot of the, the data, but I'm just curious to pick your brain. They put together three factors. Number one, the amount of population growth. And I don't know if you have data on that. They actually went through Lakewood Township over the last few years. Um, how many more boys are girl, uh, are born than girls every year? Would you would you yourself say, I think something very similar to what they, they said, about five about 5% more boys for every, let's say, 100 girls that are born, it's about 105 uh, boys. And then how many years is the current age gap right now? And that is, I think, probably a huge... Um, factor which is very hard to know you, you, they were they, they were going with an assumption that there's about I, you told me when we spoke earlier you told me 1.7 years you told me that we would it, it would make sense to have boys dating older than uh, older boys dating younger girls by about 1.7 years to compensate for the fact that more boys are born than girls without getting too much into the weeds you know they were estimating about 2.2 years as the age cap but let's let's just assume right now there's a three-year difference let's assume that 23 year old on average boys are dating 20-year-old girl, then you're going to say, but 19-year-old girls, but maybe there's some kind of average that we can go. And maybe you'll tell me that that's not, that that's a mistake. But they said that if you analyze, if, if you have about, I think they were going with about a 5% population growth every year and, um, and 5% more boys uh, born than girls uh, and a three-year age gap, they came out that about 97 or 98% of girls would have a corresponding boy. Do you have any knowledge of, uh, of that sort of data or whether that should be accurate. I really don't know like where, where they get the information. I have actually, I'm um, looking here on the side, I, I, you, anyone can do this. You can go down to the New Jersey Department of Records, ask for births for non-Hispanic white births in, in Lakewood Township. So that's a pretty, you know, you, you bring it down to, uh, to a population that we're looking at. Right. And, and uh, for example, I have the information from 1990 to 2020, there were 37,900, well, there were 73,000 children born, like uh, almost 38,000 males and 35,500 uh, females. So there was are more boys than girls born every year. The number actually is approximately 6% more boys born every year than there are girls. So it's obvious if you're going to ha have everyone at the same age, if everyone starts at to, uh, both boys and girls start at age 21, you have a reverse problem. You have a problem that uh, there, are, there, there are too many boys and not enough girls. If you go to two years, it's more or less evens out. If you go to three years and to four years, you have a problem. 
So just using this 73,000 that were born and lining up what would happen if you have a four year age gap. And again, assuming the whole population, which is a huge population of 73,000, certainly for a sample, that's big enough. And uh, we showed there will be 15% girls would not have them to marry. It's meaning like there would be 28,842 boys and 33,918 girls. And that would leave us five, that would leave five, 5,000 girls out, which is 15%. That's if you had a four year gap. Uh, I'm going to say the numbers though, it may be confusing. If we had a three year gap, you would have 31,000 boys, 34,000 girls with a 9.6% age gap. If you go to a, uh, but that's over a 30 year period. Is that correct? No, but I'm using the numbers from there because this gives me this, this gives me this big, sorry, the big large number that one second. This large number is, is, is just that so that how many boys and how many girls are. And if I would line and what I did is I lined up each of these. Sorry, something happened here. Can you put it on pause for a minute? Sure. Okay. I just spilled some water here. So again, if you look at the data, like if you have a four-year age gap, that means that on average, the, the boys are older than the girls. By four years, you would have a 15% problem. If you, and if you have a two years, it's like almost 10%. Two years, like 4%. Two years, all of a sudden, starts to flip over. And uh, if you have exact... In, um, no age gap means they, they marry the same age, you have a problem with over 6%, 6.3% more boys than girls, and they don't have them to marry. So, and by the way, if you look at the Hasidic uh, crowds, which actually do start um, at the same age, they do have a problem. No matter which Hasidic you reach out to, uh, Bells, Vizhnitz, Ger, uh, Babov, Satma, no matter what, there are problems there that there are too many boys that have incentive programs to get the boys married. Wow. Some have paid the thousands of dollars to get the boys engaged. So again, the numbers seem to indicate uh, that this is the problem. And uh, the four-year age gap is, is is bad enough. If it would have been, like you said, that uh, there, are, there are more boys, or a significant amount of boys going to fourth year here in America before going to Etsy. So, we would have probably even a bigger problem. So again, I don't really know to what extent. I don't think it's a big problem, but like I said before, just talking about the problem, admitting there's a problem, and coming out and saying, we'll do whatever we can so it doesn't get any worse, is, is very worthwhile. And I thought it's yeah. important news and, to talk about. And just to clarify the last point, and this is going to be the final question, uh, you're saying even if there's a three-year age gap based on the numbers that you pulled, um, uh, if, if there's a three-year age gap, that still would be approximately what percentage of uh, girls that would be affected or that would be left in, in, w without a potential match? I've shown that it would still be like a 10% if it was uh, a three-year gap. You see, I, I, I really should clarify. Although they start four years apart currently, the, the average age where they get married is really closer to three years apart. So, sorry, yeah. So that really uh, means that even though they start four years apart, it, since it's in reality, it's three years apart, we're dealing with a uh, closer to a 10% uh, problem. But if, uh, if there would be more, you know, if the gap gets bigger, it means that they start five years apart and it could be even a higher problem. But thankfully that's not the problem. And if it was taking root, at least as Rabbi Slamovitz put, Sort right. of like the like brakes on it. So, right. And do you, but does, does it depend on how much the population grows every year? Do, do you have a, a number for that uh, of how many more kids are born th th this year than the year before? I have from Lakewood. I don't know if Lakewood is really an yeah, indicator. Let's for go with that. Or, well, Lakewood is about 6% more. But we know from it was a, a study by the Avi Chai Foundation, they, they were studying uh, schools all around America, but that, that was not just. His, you know, just from uh, the schools, they actually went, you know, to uh, conservatives and form, and they did a, a study you know, on the Jewish uh, uh, children at all. And they found out that it was 
more like a four and a half percent population increase every year, not the six percent that is in Lakewood. But uh, it gives an idea, though, when you're dealing with uh, the population, just the fact that we're increasing every year, and then you try to match them up, it's just not going to work. It's not going to help to have Shukhanim, not going to help to have everybody should have more money, or anything you do like that. It's just all of these things help maybe the ones who are, quote, more desirable, but it doesn't change uh, who uh, how many get left behind. Okay, absolutely understood, and we really appreciate it. This has been fascinating. We'll leave it there with Shimon Lichtenstein. Uh, we really appreciate taking the time and all the you know, and all the work that you do and the incredible amount of, as, as volunteer work. So again, you've been a Nussi volunteer for 12 years, re researching the age gap extensively, as we have seen here in the last 35 minutes, and a great deal of uh, data analytic uh, experience as well. Rav Shimon Lichtenstein, thank you so much for joining us here on the VIN podcast. If I, feel, if I want, I'll add on. Yeah, side. please, go, yes. Yeah, go we, can do. Uh, we, we, we took a survey um, uh, about 10 years ago, and we uh, and said, like, uh, we asked the Beisak of high schools, let me see if I can call this thing up over here. Yeah, we asked the Beisak of high schools, um, we sent out uh, letters to them. I, I didn't do this, uh, Rabbi Pagra was involved, but at that point I was not yet in doing anything. And they sent out to the schools asking them how many uh, girls from, from 2000 and I think it was 1999, 2000 to 2005. Over the and, and and the question was in 2010, how many were still single? So we want to know how many have been dating five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, and ten years, and things like that. And we found that uh, that at age 24, that means five years after dating, 18% were still single. And at age 29, which is 10 years after dating. 11% were still single. This was a survey that we did uh, then. This was some over 5,000 girls that had graduated at that point between 2000 and 2005. We did something uh, uh, more recently. We asked for information for uh, the girls that are from 2010 to 2015. And uh, we found also like the, the percentage was somewhat higher. Like we found out at twelve percent, that have been dating already, you know, ten years, and still single, and uh, so the problem is real. The problem is there, and uh, hopefully, at least, like I said, we started addressing it. But it's huge, and the more the people are aware of it, and the more that they can do to get their sons to start younger, or the bochum themselves to start younger, it'd be a big, big help. The, re the the problem here is that in order to help the boys, you're asking them to change something that does not help them or would help their sisters. It's not an easy thing to ask for people to do things which helps others and not them. Although eventually they're going to be fathers and they're going to have their own daughters. Right. This thing needs addressing now. Or unfortunately, we said 10 years ago, if we do nothing, another 2,000 girls will be, remain single. And this goes on and on. And then eventually they're forgotten and saying they're too picky. And it's their own fault, blame the victim type of thing. And uh, again, I hope somehow this gets addressed. The sooner the better. Can't come quick enough. Thank you for having Amen. me. Amen. I appreciate it very much. And uh, like you said, you know, there are boys who want to date early. There are Bakram who are looking at it as a relief to date early. So it's not just asking them to do something selfless. But I do think if we keep emphasizing to them, I think the Bakram are good at, deep down in, in, in their hearts and they want to help Kali Israel. So, uh, it does I'll, 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 I'll add one more thing. Have like another it, minute. But yeah, edit. Bochanan would actually ask for the last, minute. For the last yeshiva, the, 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 for, the, for the yeshiva they're going to, do you allow boys to to date third year Pesach Zaman? And the answer is yes. Or at least enough people ask the question and people that, that know there was an interest in it. Maybe a change can come there. That's really where it needs to go so that they actually start at 21 because the girls are not going to start later than 19. And that Again, not everyone has to do it, but at least some, and eventually it becomes more popular. And then I'll say one more thing, people are not ready. The Hasidim get, get married much younger. They don't have any bigger problem with divorce or anything like that, that than the, the literature uh, uh, do. So I don't really know. Hopefully somebody will listen and actually they work along those lines. Again, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Shemilukhansin on the VIN podcast. Okay, bye.